Let's talk a little bit about non-manifold geometry and how it can affect you, and not just in ZBrush, but also externally from ZBrush. These things can wreak havoc on your production pipeline. So just something to be aware of. If we drag out a Polymesh 3D, go into edit mode, go all the way down here to initialize, hit Q cube, and we'll just start simple here. So I'm going to go ahead and just scale this out a little bit. And let's say we're just modeling along using ZModeler. And I go through here and I delete these back faces here. So we go to delete, polygroup all. We can just go ahead and alt drag over those and delete them. And let's say I forget I did that. Now, number one, this could be considered non-manifold geometry. If we go over here to display properties and double, uh, technically a hole where you don't have an enclosed mesh could be for some programs considered non-manifold. It's not a huge deal here, but if you were to do something like this, if we go to QMesh, polygroup all, and we just extrude these faces out, and you're modeling along, we go ahead and grab these ones here and just drag these out. You're going to start seeing it's doing some really bizarre things in there. You know, all I wanted to do was take this face and this face, and then it's, let's, you know, let's change to extrude polygroup all. I just want to move these things out. And that one worked a little bit better, but now you're going to see uh, we have, and let's go ahead and turn on double. We have a single-sided mesh here that is now connected on the inside, and then when we pulled this through, we now have an internal, we got just problems all over the place. We got an internal face here, so if I hold down Control Shift, and let's go to Select Rectangle, We've got a face just kind of sitting inside of there. If you go through here and try to smooth these things or dynamesh these things or import these into another program and you hand it off to animation or the environment modelers, uh, you go and you want to UV this thing, it's just going to be a nightmare. You're going to have faces in here. And the, if you run a cleanup tool, and in fact, you, there is a cleanup tool in ZBrush. You can go to Geometry, Mesh Integrity, Fix Mesh. So at any point, you're running an operation in ZBrush is like, hey, this mesh is dirty. Fix your mesh. This is where it is. You can check the mesh integrity, and it says, oh, it contains 18 edges that are shared more than two polygons. That's not a good thing. You can tell it to fix it, um, but it might do some weird things that you wouldn't expect it to do. And usually that's just separating these faces. So now you've got floating faces in here. You've, got, you've just got a mess of an object. All these things had to be separated because they were sharing vertices in non-manifold ways. So, you know, not, not real fun. Not a real fun time to play with. In fact, let's do one more. Let's extrude a single poly here and we'll go ahead and we'll go here to collapse edge so we'll collapse this down and we'll collapse this down and now we have even more non-manifold geometry so if we go here to check mesh integrity it says 19 edges that are shared we fix this mesh and now it's going to separate all these points out here and these points are still connected so anytime you have these edges collapse down to a point or even a single point and they're still connected right there through a single vertice that's going to give you problems. And one thing I will say that ZBrush is pretty good about is not allowing you to do n-gons. And that's just, uh, you have your three-sided polygons as a triangle, four-sided as a quad. Those are generally mathematically easy to handle in modeling software here. So if we go here to like insert single edge loop, you're going to see we didn't make any n-sided polygons here. However, if we go here and we go to like split this edge, ZBrush is automatically going to connect though that little vertice that we created to other vertices so we don't just have a floating point in here. In other programs you can do arbitrary geometry cuts and we can do it in here too. We can hold down control shift and we say slice curve and we can just arbitrarily cut through our mesh like this. However, it is going to make sure that there are no faces in here that are more than a triangle or a quad when you do that type of operation. So anyways, if you're going through here and you're queue meshing and you're seeing like uh, lamina faces is another one that's a big one. Those are faces that share the same Topology, and in fact, it was trying to do that when we did this operation here. So if we go and do a Q mesh instead of an extrude and we pull this out, oh, I thought it was going to do it. And you see that leaves that back face side there. Let's go ahead and say, I'm going to hold down Alt and isolate these. Let's hold down Control Shift, isolate them, hit Control W. And then I'm going to say Subtool. I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm going to grab this little thin sheet right here. We're going to go ahead and say Delete Hidden. And now, you know what? Just because I'm feeling like it. Let's go ahead and say, I want to merge these down again. And now we have, see how it kind of has that Z fighting right there on those faces. That means that this polygroup right here is overlapping. Hold on, control shift, isolate, control shift, drag those faces right there. So hopefully, if you ever need to, you can go into, if they haven't been vert welded yet, polygroups, auto groups. And now you're going to see all of these meshes right here, even though they're non-manifold, uh, they're all connected, they're all vert welded, and now you have this piece sitting right on top of here that's separate.
And even this one has some, when I went and uh, alt selected those, it grabbed those inside faces too. So again, you can see how easy it is to just be working really, really dirty without even realizing it sometimes. So to clean up the lamina faces, you can do an auto groups and because they're not vert welded, we can go, okay, you know what? Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And that'll get rid of those lamina faces. However, if we undo that, we got both of these together. And for some reason, these vertices are sitting right on top of each other. So if you were to go through here, and do a weld points, you're going to see it just, it does crazy stuff. It doesn't know how to handle those lamina faces and you weld to the points. And even if we go down here to display properties, double, you're going to see nothing really shows up. So that's another thing I want to bring up under display properties. If you're ever having a hard time, let's go ahead and undo all that. So we'll go ahead and delete geometry, modified topology, delete hidden on those. So we're just dealing with this non-manifold mesh again. If you ever want to see what's going on, you're like, you know, why is my mesh acting so weird? Sometimes it's useful to go to display properties, flip, and then you'll see, oh, I've got weird internal faces that are causing problems. So in that case, we can go ahead and flip this back. You can, well, you can keep flip on. You can try going through here and just alt dragging over all these internal faces here. It's like, okay, I don't really want those faces in there. So now that I have those marked, I can hold down control shift to isolate them, control shift drag to invert that. We can go ahead and flip these vertices back. Okay, okay. And now we can go geometry modify topology delete hidden. And we've, we're have we starting to clean this mesh up. Now we have these internal faces too. We can go ahead and alt drag over these ones. And then control shift isolate. We'll just grab the purple ones here and then do another delete hidden. And now our mesh is slowly becoming a little bit more regular. We can go down here to like say fix mesh and look through here. And now we can go through here and say, okay, we're going to bridge these edges. We'll bridge these to go ahead and close those holes. And now through here, you can see we have a midpoint, but we do want to bridge these. So what you can do in this case is you can go ahead and say bridge across here. And again, these aren't going to be vert welded. Now this is another thing where you have a uh, vertice leading up to an edge. And if you hold down shift or smooth, these things aren't truly connected because there's no vertice for it to attach to. So in this case, what you can do is you can go to insert, say multiple edge loops. I know it's right down the middle, so I can just put an edge loop right here. It's still not vert welded. You still have to you go in here and you move this thing around. Now those two vertices are right on top of each other. But if we say go down here to our brush settings, auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100, you're going to see, I wasn't going to let me do it. Well, it's appearing as if those are vert welded. They're really not. If you want to play it safe, go over here to the modify topology weld points, bring that up. And if you ever want to, you can use this weld distance. Say if you have like a really thin sliver or just a piece of geometry that, say we go to the top here, hold down control shift and go to slice. And you're just slice here and you're going to see, oh, those things are almost connected. You can go through and collapse those or you can run a weld point and just crank that weld distance up and it'll just go ahead and grab those together for you. So anyway, now those things are vert welded. Everything's nice and manifold and there's no busted geometry that's going to mess you up when you go to DynaMesh or export these things in other programs and it's going to yell at you.